to see what was going on. Don't you want Jesus to sit up and take notice where you are when you're at his feet? Don't you want him to be startled with a deep emotion for you when he hears you crying at his feet or worshiping at his feet or speaking to him? Don't you want that? Don't you want to hear him? Amen? Or do you? Do you? Do you want him to take notice of you? Do you want that? Do you really want that? I don't think some of you really want that. I don't think you really want God to take notice of you because I think if you think if God really took notice of you that he would reject you. Or maybe you think you're not good enough. But I'll tell you something. You spend an hour at the feet of Jesus. You purpose in your heart to be still and lay at his feet. You'll be surprised how quick he'll be moved with emotions with you. Come on. He said, who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, thy handmaiden. Spread therefore your skirt or your garment over me, for you are my near kinsman. This is such a beautiful picture. She laid at his feet until he woke up. When he woke up, he said, who are you? She said, I am Ruth, your handmaiden. Spread therefore your skirt or your garment over me, for I'm your maiden. You are my kinsman. Let me, let, me, let me break it down for you, okay? When you're at the feet of Jesus and you're worshiping before him and all of a sudden that divine connection takes place and you're in the presence of God and he says, who are you? And your response is, I'm your child. I'm the one that you died for. I'm the one that you gave your blood for. I'm the one that is beseeching your face right now. I'm the one that has need of you this morning. I'm the one that needs a touch from you this morning. I am your handmaiden or your son. I'm your daughter. Don't you get it, God? I'm at your feet. I need you. There's nothing that can touch that place. There's nothing, and those of you that are responding is because you know, you've been there, you understand, you know that there are times, oh, you can dance, you can shout, you can do the hallelujahs, but there's a time when you got to get on your knees before God, and you got to wait for him to take notice of you, and then you say, when he says, who are you? You say, I am your child. Spread therefore your garment over me. You're my redeemer. Kingsman redeemer. What were the duties of the kingsman redeemer? Hmm. Redeem property that they lost because they had to get rid of it or they had to sell it because they were in debt and they would have to sell their property and it left them destitute and made them a slave. And Ruth was saying, well, I have nothing. I have nothing, God. If you don't interact with me right now, if you don't begin to move on my behalf, become my Kingsman Redeemer. I'm in destitute. I have need of you. Spread your garment over me. It was a beautiful marriage covenant. Um, Ezekiel 16, 8 says, Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. What it means is it was the time of redemption. Do you need redemption this morning? I'm not talking about just being born again. Do you need redemption this morning? Am I talking to anybody that, say I told you it was for me. Do you need redemption this morning? Do you need God to move in your life? Well, that's what the Kingsman Redeemer does. He redeems property. He also marries when you need him so desperately. Do you ever, did you ever hear these voices? Or am I the only one that's ever heard these voices? That's when you cry out. You see, there's something about getting at his feet and you cry out and he is stirred up with emotions. He sits up and he says, what do you need? For I made, I swore unto myself that I would enter into a covenant with you. What is it that you have need of? And then you tell him. Do you think he didn't know? You see, those are the times when you have to take the word of God and you're not moved by circumstances. You don't walk by what you see, but you walk according to what the word of God says and you just lay it. Sometimes I've had to take the Bible and just put it on my head and say, God, that's all I know. That's all I know. That's all I know. God, sometimes, sometimes I go like this. You said it right here. 
I have it written down. It's right here. It is through those times that you find God. It is through those times that you know God. It is through those times of desperation that God becomes intimate with you. But some of you don't take the time. You don't take the time to read. You don't take the time to pray. You only, the only time you hear the word of God is when you come to church. There's no intimacy with Christ there. There's nothing going on. He's not your sugar daddy. He is not your sugar daddy. You have to have a relationship with him. See, we're not seeking his hand. We're seeking his face. That's what you want. That's what you want. See, and then when you get to that place and that connection, you see, <laughs> you're down on your knees and you're staying at his feet, and you're being worshiping before him, and he takes notice, and he sits up, and he says, what do you have need of? What is it that you have need of? What is it? You're moving me with your, your worship. You're moving me with your desperation. You're moving me with your prayer. You're moving me with your faith. You're moving me with your declaration in me. You're moving me. What do you want? I want you to cover me. I want you to cover me, Lord. <laughs> I want you to cover me, Lord. You see, I borrowed a tallit last week, but it's just not the same. You see, when you got your own tallit, this has been soaked in tears. Only comes out certain times. It only comes out in t hours of desperation when I need God more than, than I need my breath then I need God more than I need food. That this is the time when I'm in desperation and I say, God, cover me now, God. Cover me now. Cover me now, God. I've got to get into your presence, God. I don't want nothing else over me, God. I don't want no burden. I don't want no whisper of the enemy. I don't want anything but your voice, so cover me, Lord. It is in this place. It is in this place. It's in this place that you find God. What, you think this is a magic thing? No, it represents who God is. That's all it is. It just represents of all the promises of God. All the promises, they're tied in a knot. Everything that's a declaration. Every time you grab a hold of it, it says, God said, God said. You know, that, that scripture that Mark gave this morning, see, so many people think that they grabbed, she grabbed the hem of Jesus' garment, but what she grabbed was this. The promises the promises of God is what she grabbed. That's what she grabbed. And you see what Mark said, there's many people in the crowd, but there's only a few that will make a divine connection. There's only a few. Many will say, oh, I want Lord. I want Lord. I want Lord. But she was going to die unless she had a touch from God. And it was that touch that moved him. It was that touch. He was moved with an emotion inside of him. It was this touch until he has finished, and it's the same word, thing and matter are the same word in Hebrew, and it means until he has finished the thing he promised you. The man will not rest. You rest. That's what Melissa was saying this morning. You rest. You rest. The wind, she said, was blowing all night and all morning. You sit and rest. You be at peace because God will not be until the promise of his word has been fulfilled in your life. This day, this day, this day, this day. You see, we look at.